G'day, I'm Sean Evans and this is a GPI case from Retroflag. The GPI case is a Game Boy styled shell that you can put a Raspberry Pi into and it will emulate many old systems and games. It's not a switch on and play system by any means and will require some assembly before it's up and running. In this video I'll be reviewing and showing you how to set up a brand new GPI case straight out of the box. Let's jump in shall we? Now I bought this one off AliExpress since they're the only ones who will ship to Australia. I'll leave a link below to that for anyone who's interested. It costs around 114 Australian dollars shipped, which is roughly about $80 American. A nice touch by Retroflag was to make the packaging resemble the original Japanese Game Boy packaging. I thought that was really cool. Inside the box you'll get the GPI case itself, some basic setup instructions, a USB power cable, a reversible screwdriver and all the screws you'll need to assemble it. Retroflag's gone to great lengths to make the GPI case look and feel very much like an original DMG Game Boy and they've succeeded in a big way here. They've also added Y and X buttons to the front and L and R buttons on the back which are a much needed inclusion for some of the newer systems it can emulate which I'll show off a bit later. But maybe the most impressive feature of the GPI case is the cartridge slot. This whole back piece here comes off and houses the Raspberry Pi and then slots back in nicely to interface with the screen and buttons like an original Game Boy game would. Unlike the original Game Boy however it takes three AA batteries instead of four. I would have preferred 4 for the longer battery life or ideally an inbuilt rechargeable battery pack but as it stands you'll get roughly 4-6 to six hours gameplay depending on the system you're emulating, volume and screen brightness. Before you start putting anything together you're going to want to get some parts that aren't included with the GPI case together. The first and most important part is the Raspberry Pi which is essentially the system's brain. You can use a Pi Zero or a Pi Zero W, however I'd recommend using a Zero W as it has a Wi-Fi chip built in and it will make copying games and other files to the GPI case much easier once everything's installed. This one cost me around 18 Australian dollars shipped which I'll also leave a link to in the description for anyone interested. Next you'll need a micro SD card, I think mine cost around 12 bucks and you can pick these up just about anywhere nowadays. I'm using a 32GB card and honestly it's more than enough storage for what you're going to be putting on here. Uh, you're also going to need a card reader to flash some of the files to the SD card during the installation. And finally three AA batteries. Ideally you want to pick up some good quality rechargeables like these Eneloops here. I've heard really good things about these and they're only about $30 for a pack of four. Now we have all our parts we can start to assemble them. Firstly you're going to want to take out the cartridge slot and pull the two pieces apart from one another like so. Uh, watch out for the little SD card slot door, it might fly out like mine did while you're doing it. Just put that aside for now and we can focus on the interface board that's already inside the cartridge. You'll notice it has these springy metal rods sticking out. These rods will make contact with the Raspberry Pi and be held into place once you assemble everything. Retroflag has ingeniously made everything plug and play with no soldering required. Next you're going to want to insert the black micro USB from the interface board to the micro USB port on the Pi. Then take the Pi and place it into the front half of the cartridge slot. It should fit nicely into place like so. Next you're going to want to take the four threaded head screws and reversible screwdriver that came with the case and screw them into the four corners of the Pi like so. Be aware not to use too much force when you're tightening them. Once they're all in place you can fold the interface board down so it's making contact with the Pi and replace the SD card slot door like so. You can then take the back half of the cartridge slot and press it back together with the front half. It should snap together. Now take the remaining Phillips head screws and screw them onto the four remaining spots on the back there. And that's all you'll have to do with the case itself for now. Everything else we'll do with software, so grab the SD card and your card reader and we'll jump over to the computer for the next half of the guide. So firstly connect the SD card to the computer via the card reader, then head over to the RetroPie website shown here. I'll leave a clickable link to everything in the description below as well. Click Get RetroPie, then click Raspberry Pi 0 slash 1. This will download an image file that we're going to flash to the SD card. After that's downloaded you want to head over to the Balina Etcher website shown here and download Etcher. Once you've downloaded that head over to the Retroflag download page shown here and download the GPI case patch. Once you've downloaded those three files you're going to want to install Etcher and run it. It'll first ask you to select an image. Here you want to select the image file you just downloaded from the RetroPi website. Then you want to make sure the device it's about to flash is the SD card and then finally click flash. This will start flashing that image to your SD card and should take around 5 minutes. After it's done we can close Etcher and unplug and reconnect your SD card to your computer. 
You may see a window like this pop up asking you to format, just ignore it and close the window. The next thing we're going to want to do is copy the GPI case patch to our newly flashed SD card. So to do this we need to open up a window at the root directory of the SD card. It should be called boot now. Next open up the GPI case patch zip file, double click the folder called GPI case patch and then copy the folder called GPI case patch inside there. Head back over to your boot window and paste the file there. Next open up the folder and double click install patch.bat. You should see a black window pop up and copy some files over. Once that's done press any key to finish the installation. Next we're going to want to add a file to the SD card so that when we turn on the GPI case it's going to automatically join our Wi-Fi network. Go back to the Retroflag download page and click Q how to set up Wi-Fi if GPI case assembled can't use a keyboard. Some text should drop down like so. Highlight the following text and copy it and then open up a new notepad file and paste the text there. The first thing you're going to want to change is the country code. CN refers to China, US refers to America, UK, EU, etc. I'm using AU since I'm in Australia. Next where it says Wi-Fi underscore ID, we're going to want to enter the name of your Wi-Fi and then your Wi-Fi password below where it says Wi-Fi underscore password. Once you've done that, click file then save. We're going to save this file to the root directory of the SD card as well. So navigate over there and change the save as type to all files. Next go back to the Retroflag website and copy the following text. Then go back to notepad and paste that text as the file name. Hit save then head back over to the boot window and double check that it's been saved properly to your SD card as a config file. Finally we're going to eject the SD card and head back over to the GPI case. So remove the cartridge and open up the SD card slot door. Put the SD card into the system like so and close the door back up and replace the cartridge. Next open up the battery compartment and flick the little black switch labeled safe shutdown to the on position. This will allow us to install some software that will make sure the system shuts down safely whenever we use the switch on the top of the console and prevent the SD card from becoming corrupted. Next we can put in our batteries, replace the door and switch are on. The first time you turn it on it's going to automatically install some things so just be patient till it asks you to configure the controls. Input all the controls you can until it asks you to configure the left trigger right trigger buttons. Since it doesn't have an L2 or R2 just hold any button to skip. Once you've skipped through to the end of the menu it'll ask you something about enabling hotkeys. This really doesn't matter so just press yes. And then from there you can press B to go back to the main menu. The first thing you're going to want to do from here is go into the RetroPie menu. Scroll down and select the Show IP option. From here you want to write down the IP address it shows you. This will be different for everyone so please don't use the one shown here. Return to the last menu you were in and then select Raspi-Config. Scroll down to the Interfacing Configure. Press Right and then B to select it. Then scroll down to SSH and press Right and B to select it again. It will ask you if you want the SSH server to be enabled, select yes and then hit B again. Select OK and then press right twice and then B to finish. We're just going to return to the main menu from here and then jump over to the computer to install the safe shutdown script. First thing you're going to want to do is head over to the PuTTY website, there's a clickable link in the description once again. Click download PuTTY here and select the corresponding installer for your computer. Install PuTTY then open it up. Where it says hostname or IP address, you're going to enter the IP address that we wrote down earlier and then click open. You may see a warning pop up, just ignore this and press yes. Where it says login as, type pi, pi, and press enter. For the password, type raspberry, r-s-p-b-e-r-r-y, and press enter. If you see the following screen, you've successfully connected to your GPI case. From here we want to head back to the Retroflag website and click the download button beneath where it says safe shutdown and safe reset. This will take you to another page. All you got to do is scroll down to where it says Retroflag GPI case and select the following text. Copy it then head back over to PuTTY and paste it in there and hit enter. This will automatically download and install the safe shutdown script to your GPI case. Once it's done you should see a window like this pop up, don't panic, it means the GPI case has been restarted because the script was successfully installed. So now we can jump back over to the GPI case and check that the safe shutdown script has installed properly by switching it off and on again. If you see this happen when you switch off your GPI case, it's been successfully installed.
One thing I'd highly recommend doing before you do anything else is install a new theme that works much better with the smaller screens than the default one does. Go into the RetroPie menu, select ES Themes, scroll all the way down to where it says install RX Brad slash GBZ35, hit OK and it will download the theme for you. Once that's done, hit cancel and return to the main menu. From there, press start and then scroll down and select UI settings. From there, scroll down to where it says theme set and select GBZ35. From there, hit back and the theme will automatically be applied. You'll notice straight away that everything looks a whole lot better with this theme. So the only thing left for us to do now is to add some games and get playing. Before we add any games though, we'll have to expand the file system. So we do this by entering the RetroPie menu again, select Raspy Config, scroll down to where it says Advanced OP Configure, hit the right button then B. We want to select the first option Expand Fill in Shores, so hit the right key and then B again. That will resize the file system for us. All we got to do now is press OK, then write twice and then B to finish. It'll ask us to reboot now, select yes to reboot the system. Now we're ready to copy games over to the GPIK, so jump back over to the computer and we'll do that now. The first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that our computer is connected on the same network as the GPIK. If it's not, do that now. From here we want to open the file explorer and in the address bar type backslash backslash retropie in all capitals. This will connect you to your GPI case over your local network and from here you can add files to it. We're only concerned with the ROM folder for now so open that up and you'll see a whole bunch of folders named after various systems. This is where we're going to copy our ROM files to. For example the folder called GB is where you'll put your Game Boy ROMs. Now legally I can't actually tell you where to find ROMs but honestly it's pretty easy just run a Google search. So once you've got the ROMs you want, you're going to copy and paste them into their corresponding folders here and they'll be automatically added to the menu next time you reboot your GPI case. Okay, so that's all you'll need to know to start playing. Hope you found that helpful. The following is a few tests I ran on some popular games and systems to see how they run, so please enjoy that. First up for the original Game Boy we have Donkey Kong 94. Next up we have Tetris. Super Mario Land. For the Game Boy Color we have Super Wario Land. For the NES we have Super Mario Bros. Pathetic. We couldn't leave out Battletoads, could we? Next we have Castlevania. Super Mario Bros. 3. Pathetic. Next we have Sonic the Hedgehog for the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive depending on where you're from. Have Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo.
Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo. You might know this one. A link to the past. Super Mario Kart We have Pokemon Emerald for the Game Boy Advance. You will have to do some messing around to add BIOS files to play G Game Boy Advance games, but it's not very hard. Again, just Google search Game Boy Advance BIOS. We have The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. Next we have for the PlayStation 1, Crash Bandicoot 2. Similar to the Game Boy Advance, you'll have to do some messing around and you'll have to add a new emulator for it to run any good on the Pi Zero. Pathetic. You'll also have to add BIOS files, but again, Google search it. It's Crash Team Racing. Spyro the Dragon. Where's Nasty Nork? I'll torture. And finally, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. This is some nostalgia right here. I did try and emulate some Nintendo 64 games, but the results were poor. This may change in the future, however, as the developers improve the emulators. But with that, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching. If you're looking to play all your favourite classics on the new and improved, yet somehow classic, Game Boy hardware, I definitely recommend picking up the GPI case from Retroflag. If you're having trouble with anything I mentioned in the video, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. Hooroo for now and I'll catch you in the next one!